Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on a Steam Deck. So this is a 512 gigabyte version. It's been a long time coming. I was hoping to get one a little earlier, but unfortunately I just couldn't swing it. Either way, we've got one in-house now and we can do a lot of testing on it. I will have several videos coming up, so if I didn't add something in this video, just let me know in the comments below and we'll put it in the next one. There's going to be a lot to cover with this unit, but uh, first up, let's go ahead and get this out of the box. Now this does come with a 45 watt charger. It charges over USB type C. And I guess some of the first Steam Decks coming out will get the carrying case. I'm not sure if they're going to have this added down the road for every Steam Deck, but with this 512 gigabyte version, it did come with it, as you can see here. So yeah, I have been waiting and waiting to get my hands on one. I do a lot of videos on these Ryzen APUs, mini PCs, handhelds, and finally we've got the Steam Deck in-house. Like I mentioned, this is the 512 gigabyte version, so it does have that anti-glare etched glass on it. And by anti-glare, I guess it just kind of dulls down the glare. I do have a big light up here, but we can still see some stuff coming through. The screen's not on yet, but first things first, right off the bat, this is a pretty big handheld. It's not as heavy as it looks. Picking it up, I was really surprised by how light it is. And, uh, yeah, they've done a really good job with the design here. Analog sticks feel good. We've got those touch pads. Uh, analog triggers, which is a big plus for these handhelds. And yeah, after getting it set up and messing around with it for a few days, uh, I'm really impressed by this little unit here. Got a great layout. There are a couple little gripes, and I'll talk about those in a second. But so far, I've been having a really good time with this unit. So taking a look at the top layout here, we've got our shoulder buttons, our analog triggers, our volume up and down, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a single USB Type-C port. Really wish they would have added at least one full-size USB on this unit. Moving around to the bottom, not much else going on, but we do have that micro SD card slot. Around back, we've got four extra buttons, and these can be mapped to basically anything you need. They're not analog, so it's going to be on or off, but these will come in handy. I mean, yeah, the overall layout is really nice. Loving these analog triggers around back. They come in really handy for racing games. And I know a lot of people watching this have probably already seen the specs, but I do want to go over it real quick. So the CPU we have here in the Steam Deck is a custom Zen 2 based Ryzen APU. We've got 4 cores, 8 threads with a base clock of 2.4 GHz and a boost up to 3.5. One of the main claim to fames for the Steam Deck is the iGPU. Now since we're working with the Ryzen APU, in the past it's always been Vega Graphics or Radeon Vega, but with this it's based on RDNA 2. We have 8 CUs with a clock up to 1600 MHz, and when it comes to video memory on these iGPUs, it utilizes system RAM. So with this, instead of using DDR4 or LPDDR4, they've opted for much faster LPDDR5, running at 5500 MHz, it's in quad channel, we've got 16 GB of it. This is really going to help out with that new iGPU. When it comes to storage on the Steam Deck, you can get 64 gigabytes, which is actually eMMC, 256 or 512, which we have here. All of them utilize a 2230 M.2 SSD, and we also have that micro SD card slot. I've added a 400 gigabyte card just to bring it up a little more. The built-in display is a 7-inch IPS at 1280 by 800. We've got AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, a 40 watt hour battery with 45 watt PD 3.0 quick charging. It's running SteamOS 3.0, and we also have access to KDE Plasma Desktop, which we will take a look at in this video. Okay, so I've had a few days to mess around with the Steam Deck, and first, right off the bat, the thing is pretty big. I mean, it definitely looks large for a handheld, but it's a lot lighter than it looks. And it's really comfortable to play on. I love these palm rests here. They got that little angle to them, so you kind of just fit right in this thing. We've got these really handy track pads on each side, and they have HD haptics built in. When it comes to the main button placement over here on the right-hand side, at first I was a little worried about the placement of that B button being so close to the edge, but, uh, you know, I haven't had any trouble with it. It actually works out really well. My one gripe here with the control layout is you do have to reach over pretty far to get to those analog sticks, if you have smaller hands, this might present a little bit of an issue, but it's something I got used to really fast. And in the past couple days, messing around with the Steam Deck, this thing has turned out to be one of the best little handhelds that I've ever messed around with. And I know everybody's saying that, but truly, Valve has put a lot of thought in this unit when it comes to the hardware and especially the software. So this is running SteamOS 3.0. Very easy to navigate, very easy to get to your games. You can go right to the Steam Store if you need to download more stuff. We've got our main menu right here with our recent games. 
Everything's very accessible. You can use the track pads, the D-pad, or the analog sticks to navigate the interface. And right out of the box, if you've already got a Steam account that you've been using on your PC, I mean, you can be up and playing in no time. It really depends on how fast your internet connection is, or just pick up something really quick to download. But this is truly like a console experience in a handheld form factor. SteamOS is awesome for gaming, but when it comes down to it, this is basically just an x86 PC. And if we head to the power section, we can swap over to the KDE Plasma desktop that they have built in here. And from here, we can still access Steam. It's going to swap over right now. And we have a full Linux-based desktop operating system here. We can go through, install different browsers, different applications, emulators, uh, photo editing software, video editing software. There's a ton that we can do with this. And I will have a full video coming up just on the desktop side of things. But in this video, we will take a look at it over HDMI because after all, the Steam Deck does support display out over USB Type-C. So if you're not into tweaking and tuning, you can actually just pick this up, start playing your favorite Steam Deck verified games from Steam very easily. But Valve has also included some awesome little tools here for people who love to tweak and tune, like me and a lot of my viewers. So if we head over here to our battery performance section, we have advanced view. We can limit all games to 30 FPS. This is going to put a lock at 30. We also have a thermal power limit. So we can set this up from 1 watt to 15 watts, and this will save a lot of energy when you're not doing, you know, hardcore gaming tasks or just playing a 2D game that doesn't require a lot of power. We've got our scaling filter here where we can turn FSR right on from here. Makes it really easy to basically just turn this on and off with the flick of a switch. I mean, it's so easy here. We can also change the sharpness directly from this menu. But one of my favorite things that they've added here is the preference overlay. So we can actually change this from level 1 all the way down to off. And this is going to give us information on what's going on with the Steam Deck. We've got our battery percentage, our load, our CPU and GPU clocks, plus wattage. It'll also show us in real time the FPS our games are running at. It just makes it really easy to see what's going on with the Steam Deck while you're playing your favorite PC games. So of course I wanted to jump right into some gaming and like I mentioned I will have several videos coming up so if there's games you want to see running just let me know in the comments below. First up we have Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. High settings, we're using the stock screen resolution of the Steam Deck, 1280 by 800, and we're running at 60. When I first started this match, every once in a while I would see it drop down to around 58, and that can definitely be fixed by dropping a couple of these settings down to medium. It's not going to hurt image quality that much, but I wanted to test it at high and it's actually running great. And by the way, this game isn't Steam Deck verified and it's still running as well. With the Steam Deck, we can enable FSR even if the game doesn't support it. And going into this, I knew we weren't going to run it at 60 FPS high settings, but uh, if we do go ahead and limit the frame rate to 30, we can actually run this at 30 high settings on the Steam Deck. And it's still a really enjoyable experience. I mean, it would definitely be nice to play this at 60 on the Steam Deck, but we're going to be hard pressed to do this. This game just came out. It still needs a little bit of work on PC anyway, but I still wanted to see how it would perform at low settings with that frame lock completely off, so I just went to low settings, restarted the game, and we're not that far off from high settings, and this is kind of across the board with the AMD APUs. I've been able to test a newer RDNA 2 APU that's much more powerful than the one in the Steam Deck, and even at 720p on that system, it's still hard pressed to run it at a stable 60 low settings, so I wasn't expecting this unit to run this game at 60 and high 30 FPS looks great and it's fully playable. Next up, Doom Eternal, one of my favorite games. Uh, this is one of my go-to tests for my PC builds and I wanted to see how it would handle it. We're at medium settings running this at 60 and there's a chance I could probably go up to high with this using that built-in FSR. Here's another game that's not Steam Deck verified. Project Cars 2, medium settings, and I actually wasn't expecting it to run this well. We still get dips under 60, but I got a lot of settings that I can actually turn down here, and at medium settings, I'd still say this is really playable on the Steam Deck. And finally, for the PC section, at least in this video, we have God of War, the PC port. I do have FSR enabled in the settings on the game itself, but it's stating that it's off over here in the game scope. Not sure what's going on there, but it is on. It's set to balanced, and I'm getting an average of around 42 FPS. We can definitely get more out of this game. Remember, we're at the original graphics quality. We can actually drop this down to low, but one thing I wanted to do was just change the FSR setting to performance. 
So we'll head over here real quick. And from display, from balanced, we'll go to performance. And with it set up like this, still at the original graphics quality, we're getting an average of around 51. Not bad at all. And yeah, I mean, if that FPS counter wasn't on, on this smaller screen, I wouldn't even notice it. It does feel really good at 50 FPS. But there was one last thing I wanted to try. So I took the settings up to high, turn FSR to balance, and we locked it at 30. It looks great, like it sits even with that FSR on, and uh, yeah, this is probably how I'm just going to end up playing it. So the Steam Deck is great for PC gaming, but one of the main reasons I wanted to pick one up was for emulation. And we're going to test out a few now. There are some issues right now with uh, emulation on YouTube with the Steam Deck. So in this video, we're going to show off some PS2, PS3, and PSP. It's actually really easy to get these emulators set up, and I will do a full tutorial if anybody's interested. But let's go ahead and move over to some PS2 emulation. And first up, we have Soul Calibur 3. With this, I'm using the Vulcan back end. We're at 720p and get an amazing performance here. I'm fairly confident that we could upscale even higher with these games on an external monitor, but remember, we only have a 1280 by 800 screen, and it's not going to make much of a difference on the built-in screen. Here's Gran Turismo 4, again, 720p, Vulcan back in, really great PS2 performance on the Steam Deck. And I will have a full emulation video coming up, so just stay tuned to the channel. But the way it looks right now for emulation on the Steam Deck, I mean, this thing is definitely trucking through. Moving over to PS3 using RPCS3, we're at 720p here, I've got the Vulcan back end running, Tekken 6, easier one to emulate, we're at 60fps. It did dip down a bit when those shaders were loading, but uh, once everything was ironed out, it works great on this machine. Now we do have harder to emulate PS3 games, like Skate 3, which does require a lot of CPU power. And unfortunately, at least right now, with the version of RPCS3 I'm using, we cannot run this at 60, so I've locked it at 30. When I have it unlocked, it's only running at about 42 FPS, and like I mentioned, this does require a lot of CPU power, loves extra cores and threads, but there is a chance that the developers of RPCS3 are going to get a hold of a Steam Deck and maybe work out some optimizations for this little APU. Running all of our PC games and emulators on the Steam Deck's built-in screen is really great for portability, but it does support display over USB Type-C. I'm using a cheap adapter here, USB Type-C to HDMI. It's got two USB ports on it. Valve does make a dock, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get my hands on one just yet, but this does work. As soon as I plug it in, it's going to come up on my monitor. And you can navigate the full operating system with a keyboard and mouse. I mean, this is just basically an x86 PC, and you could use it as an everyday PC. Right now, we're in Steam OS, looking great. We can install our games, we can play our games from here, we can head over to our installed applications and run those through Steam. Or, we could set this up and go into desktop mode. So it does have KDE Plasma as your desktop. It's a full Linux operating system move over there right now. And the first time you boot this up, it might look a little odd, but you can head right over to the display settings and make sure your monitor is actually set to 60 hertz, 1080p, or whatever resolution you want to choose. But 60 hertz is definitely important with this one. When I first plugged it in, it was only running at 24. But what we have now is a full PC. I mean, we can browse the web, you can check your emails, you can do some photo editing, some video editing. There's an application store that's really easy to get to called Discover, and you can download new applications from there. I've also installed GIMP and Blender. In my next video, we'll be running some tests on those. But real quick, here's GIMP. This is an open source, free to use photo editing software suite, and it does work really well on the Steam Deck. In the coming days, I'll be showing more of this off, but real quick, I did install RetroArch. I've got PSP set up, so you can play your favorite emulators right here in desktop mode if that's how you want to do it. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. It just paired right up. So here we have PSP. I'm actually using RetroArch, not the standalone version. We've got Midnight Club, Dub Edition, and it's running great on the Steam Deck, even in desktop mode. So first impressions here, Valve has really hit it out of the park with the Steam Deck. This is a great handheld console and it actually makes a pretty awesome little desktop PC also. We've got that video out, so it's no problem at all connecting it up to a different monitor or a television. I definitely want to spend some more time with it before I give you my final thoughts, but first impressions are looking really good. I've had it for three days right now and I've been having an absolute blast with it. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that notification bell so you know when I post my next video because I will have a few more coming out. And let me know in the comments below what applications you want to see running on the Steam Deck. I'm definitely going to be doing a full Windows video. As of making this video, we just got the GPU drivers for the Steam Deck so we can install Windows 10 on this unit. And of course, I'll have a full emulation video coming very shortly. But if there's anything else you want to see running, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.